Hello and welcome to the challenge video. Something that I'm hoping most of my wonderful seventh grade students are watching because I challenge them with this. Quadratic sequences. We don't have to be able to come up with explicit rules. The standard calls for us to be able to come up with explicit rules for linear and exponential and we need to understand quadratics, some basics about it, but we don't necessarily always have to come up with a rule. But I thought, hey, why not? You guys are ready for this. Why not do it now while it's fresh in our mind? And so it maybe even will make sense, um, better sense of quadratics for you later. So something you'll want to know if you really want to learn this, which I hope you do, is this is the standard form of a quadratic equation where A, B, and C are actual integers. Or I said that wrong. They don't have to be integers. They could be fractions. They're just real numbers. So with that in mind, let's look. How can we go from a sequence that we know is quadratic directly into something in standard form? Let's take a look. So you may remember that we did actually come up with quadratic equations for our tile patterns. But that was quite a bit easier because we had, you know, like a length and a width of the middle piece. So we could come up, you know, with like n plus 2 times n plus 1 or whatever it was for that particular pattern. So this, you know, is focusing on how to just go from a sequence of numbers. And remember, using standard form, all we need to do is come up with what A is going to be equal to, what B is going to equal, and what C is going to equal. Set it equal to Y, and we're good to go. So let's, let's get started. This is the first term. Let me actually move all this over just a little bit. So this is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. This is the fourth term. Well, the first thing we should do is double check that it's actually quadratic. So our, whoops, I just dropped my stylus here. Let me get rid of that. So the, um... First set of differences here is 5, then it goes to 7, then it goes to 9. So the second set of differences is 2 and 2. Now, obviously, we needed four um, numbers in the sequence to be sure it's quadratic because we need at least two second differences to make sure they match. And when the second differences are the same, we know it's quadratic. Well, what's so cool about this is that A, so A in our standard form, is half it's half of the second difference. In this case, our second difference is 2. And half of 2 is 1. So A is just 1. So I can write that right here. I have 1x squared. Now, we need to figure out what B and C are. By the way, x squared, we could be talking about n. It just depends on what variable we want to use. So, Let's go about this now to find C next. After you find A, finding C is the next step. Sorry if you hear that crazy yelling, that's some eighth graders in the hallway being goofy. So, look at the graph of this rule. I knew the equation, so I graphed it. Notice the y-intercept. It comes through right here when x is zero, y is one. So here's two, zero, and one. So the y-intercept is at one, and as it turns out, the, um, let me shrink this back down, C in this case is the y-intercept. But you don't know how to graph it yet because you don't have the equation, so you can't find the y-intercept through graphing. But we can find the y-intercept by taking this back to the zero term. Because remember, the y-intercept is when x is zero or n is zero. And you know what, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna call all these x's and we'll forget about n for a bit. Um, when x is 0, what is y? That's our y-intercept. So this difference right here before it must be 3 because our common difference needs to continue to be 2. So that means that our term of 0 must be 1. So now we've got 1x squared plus bx, let me write this in the same color, plus bx plus 1. So now all we have to do is find B. We found A because it was half a second difference. We found C because it's the y-intercept or the zero term. And now let's go about finding B. And for me, the easiest way to calculate B is to set what I know equal to, to a number. So let's, let's look at, um, oh, let's, do, let's do this one. Let's look at the third term. So when the um, when x is 3, we know it should all equal 16. So we can set up an equation. So we'll plug this in here. And as we plug it in, we want to plug in 3 in the place of x. So 1 times 3 squared plus b times 3 
plus 1 we know has to equal 16 because that was the number in our sequence. I'm going to move all this up here so we can see a little bit better. And so I stole that information and now I can solve for B. I really didn't need to include the 1 here because 1x one squared is just x squared so I can kind of just get rid of it. And I know now that this is going to be 9, this is going to be 3 times B, and then plus 1 equals 16. So as we solve this, we end up with 3B plus 10 equals 16, or 3B equaling 6, because we subtract 10 from both sides. So B must be 2. So I guess the way we figure out B is we already know A, we already know C, then we steal some information from what we know, set up an equation, and solve for b. That's one way to do it. So now my final equation, I started out with knowing it should be ax squared plus bx plus c, ended up being x squared, or 1x squared, plus 2x plus 1. And if we test this out, if we look at the zero term, if we plug in zeros for the x's, we'd end up with 1. And that's what we expect from what we had talked about earlier. If we plugged in 2 for the x's, so the second term, we would have, we would have, let me see, um, 2 squared plus 2 times 2. I'm just plugging in 2 for x. And we'd end up with 4 plus 4 plus 1, which is 9. And if we look over here, when x was 2, we should have gotten 9. So the equation, hey, this equation is working out nicely. And so I've just tested it. Now re remember, or not remember, but note that you won't always have all these things in here. It's possible for C to be 0 and for B to be 0 and to just have an AX squared. That is very possible. But if you don't have an AX squared, is it still quadratic? Or would it become linear? That's an interesting question. Anyways, I hope this video is helpful for you if you are curious on how to go about actually finding the equation. Thanks for watching.